Hey, my name is Leah Day, and in this video I'd like to share with you some tips on getting started free motion quilting. The very first thing you're going to need to do to get started is to put on a free motion quilting foot on your machine. This is also called a darning foot, and uh, some machines come with them, some machines don't. If your machine came with one, great. If your machine didn't come with one, don't worry. You can still look around and try and find a generic free motion quilting foot or check with your manufacturer and see if they produce one for your machine. My personal preference on machines that don't come with free motion quilting feet is to get a generic foot. They're either high shank or low shank and then I like to modify them so that they work a little bit better. You can check out a tutorial on how to do this below but I'm just going to put this on the machine so that way we can get started. To get started free motion quilting, the only thing that you need to do to your machine is turn your stitch length down to zero. What this is going to do is this is going to disengage your feed dogs. It's not going to drop them down into the machine. Instead, it's just going to stop them from feeding the fabric forward. I don't drop my feed dogs because I find that it messes with the tension of the machine and I find that my stitch quality is, I usually struggle to get good stitch quality. So my general advice is to just simply turn your stitch length to zero and leave everything else on your machine the same. If it produces decent stitches for piecing, those stitches should look just as good for free motion quilting. And that's my general feeling about it. If you want to learn more about why I don't drop my feed dogs, you can read an article below. Now, to get started, all I'm going to do is slide my quilt underneath the needle, drop the foot down, and I'm going to hang on to this top thread. I'm going to use the hand wheel to drop the needle down into the machine, and it should pull up the bobbin thread. There it goes. And all I do is grab that bobbin thread so I have both threads on the top, and I tuck that underneath the foot. To start stitching, all I'm going to do is drop the needle in the down position, put both of my hands on the quilt, and then start quilting. I don't build up my thread or back stitch at the beginning, simply because I go back in and hide those threads in the middle layer of the quilt later. For a tutorial on that, please check for a link below, so that way you can watch how that is done. Now it's time to just check both sides of the quilt to see how the stitches look. If you see big giant loops on one side of the quilt or the other, try adjusting your tension of your machine or re-threading your machine. Sometimes it's easy to miss a guide and uh, suddenly start getting bad looking stitches. It's important to play with your tension and see if that can help your stitches look better, but understand that good tension is a work in progress. Don't obsess about it at the beginning. It's going to be one of those things that comes with time. It's quality. Another thing that affects stitch quality quite a bit is the thread that you're using. For free motion quilting, I always use Isocord brand polyester embroidery th thread. I really like this thread and I use it both in the top and in the bobbin of the machine. I don't mismatch threads. I think that, that is a really big reason why beginners struggle with free motion quilting because we put something cheap and not very strong or um, very good in the bobbin and then we put something nice and silky and shiny in the top and that is a very bad combination. So I use the exact same color of thread even in the top and the bobbin so that way all those stitch issues are just well really they're hidden in the thread. You can't see them and it'll save you a lot of headaches and issues struggling with your stitches and your tension. Of course, there is a very big difference between stitching something this big and stitching something this big. And this is a baby quilt. And there's also a very big difference between stitching a baby quilt and stitching a king size quilt. So how do you deal with the quilt on the surface of your machine? Well, there's several tools that I use to make my machine work better and to help me grip and move the quilt easily in free motion. The very first thing that I use are Machiniger's quilting gloves. I learned about these in my very first class on free motion quilting and I always use them. 
what they do is they help me grip the surface of the quilt because the fingertips have rubber on them and they help me to grip and move the quilt easily. If you don't wear gloves or you don't use something similar to help you increase your grip, you're going to find yourself clenching your quilt like this and that can hurt your hands very badly. The next thing that I use inside my machine to make my stitches look better are Little Genie Magic Bobbin Washers. The basic idea behind them is there's a little extra space in your bobbin area and by filling them up with these Teflon washers that space will be taken up and the bobbin will glide and feed a lot more smoothly. I use these in all of my machines all the time so I don't take them out for piecing. I just put them in the bobbin case, wind the bobbin on top just like normal and I forget about them. They work in both side loading and top loading bobbins so you can use them in any machines and they come with 12 in a pack. I think the reason is uh, we lose them more often than we would ever run out of them because I have only ever worn out one in the four years that I've been using them. So that lets you know how long they're going to last. The last thing that I really recommend for free motion quilting on a home machine is a Supreme slider. I always have this on my machine when I'm free motion quilting. What it is is it's a Teflon sheet that grips the surface of your machine bed. It's slick and slippery and it helps your quilt to move and glide over the surface of your machine bed. You want to tape it down at first whenever you are getting used to using it because it will sometimes pull up by the uh, weight of your quilt running over it and you don't want to stitch through it. That's really not any fun. You'll have to pick out those stitches on the back of your quilt and you'll have a, a rip or a tear in your slider. So make sure you tape it down. But this is wonderful for free motion quilting. It really does make a big difference. We have the original Supreme slider, which I used for years and I think is excellent. And now, of course, we also have an even bigger one. This is the Queen Supreme, and it's double the size. So if you have a bigger machine, that's a better choice for you. Now let's talk about your actual machine setup and how this would work a little bit better for you, uh, how you can set it up so it's most efficient for free motion quilting uh, big quilts on a small machine. Of course, how you set up your machine at your table is super important for free motion quilting. Here you can see this is one of my other sewing machines and it's set up in the Gidget 2 sewing and quilting table. This is putting the machine on a flush surface with the tabletop so I'm no longer fighting the drag of pushing and pulling the quilt over the edges of the sewing machine. Because this table is so small, I've matched it up with a 6 foot by 3 foot folding table in the back and this is a 2 foot by 4 foot folding table here on the side. I really prefer to push this whole thing into a corner so that I have walls along this side and along the back, but my room didn't allow me to do that in this room, so instead I just simply continue to extend the table out with more folding tables and you can see I set up another machine down there. So really it's just a matter of using your space as wisely as you can. But here I really wanted to point out it's important to have kind of an L shape around your body so that the quilt is mostly on the table so that you always have it on a flush surface so it can move easily and evenly over your machine. The quilt will want to set in your lap and you want to try and avoid letting it do that. Instead, just simply slide it into the machine, get it into the area that you're going to quilt, and then try and shift most of the weight of the quilt so that it is to the back or to the side. One last thing before we go, a lot of quilters seem to think that they need some souped up, uh, very expensive sewing machine in order to free motion quilt beautifully. And the truth is you don't. Whatever machine you're using right now, I'm sure that it's going to be just fine for free motion quilting. You just simply need to be willing to work through those beginning ugly stitches that happen to everybody. Um, it just takes maybe a few quilts, two or three quilts, to really work through all of that kind of beginning time and those ugly stitches before you get it all figured out. Uh, think back to the very first block you ever pieced. It wasn't perfect, was it? So remember that with free motion quilting. Your first quilt probably won't be perfectly quilted. 
But by the time you get done with it, you will have learned so much about free motion quilting. If you're interested in learning more basics and going into more depth about how to set up your machine and get a good project to work on first, check out the Free Motion Quilting Basics for Beginners DVD. This is a DVD I put together a few years ago and really I was just trying to put down all of that material, all of that information on how to help you get started. If you're interested in learning more about any of the tools or tables that I mentioned and showed in this video, check out the Day Style Designs Quilt Shop at daystyledesigns.com. This is a quilt shop run by me and my husband and it supports the Free Motion Quilting Project. It's the reason I'm able to post all of these videos every week. So now that we know the basics of free motion and you're able to set up your machine for this, let's go quilt.